Hello, welcome along to the Virtual Village Hall Christmas Quiz. I hope you've had a good year. It doesn't seem possible that it's been 12 months since we did the one in 2020. Glad to have you along this afternoon. If you're new to us, very welcome. If you've been there with the quiz before, you'll know how it works, but I will explain it again. Basically, there are going to be 10 rounds. Let me try that again. There are going to be six rounds and there'll be 10 questions in each round. I got there in the end. So the rounds this afternoon will be general knowledge. There'll be somewhere in America. There'll be a mystery round, and I'll explain more about that when we get there. Then we can have a game around on game and quiz shows. Then we can have a round on Christmas shopping. And then we're going to have a round, finish it off with some Christmas movies. So a lot to get through this afternoon. What I would say is make sure you've got pens and paper at the ready and a spare bit of paper as well, because how it's going to work is that we're going to have three rounds to start with straight through three rounds. Then we'll do the marking of those three rounds and then we'll do the last three rounds and we'll do the question the answers and the marking for those as well so if there's any questions that you're not sure of of the answers write them down on a spare bit of paper so i hope you're all ready i hope you're poised with your pens and you're all ready for a bit of quizzing on this christmas quiz so question round number one then it's general knowledge so question number one what was the name of the storm that battered britain in the last weekend of November. It was the first named storm of the winter, but what was it? it caused a lot of damage across the country, mostly in Scotland and Northern England. Uh, but what was it called? The name of the storm, please, that battered Britain on the last weekend of November. Don't forget, if you're not sure, just write the question down on a spare bit of paper and the answer might come to you a little bit later on. So let's move on. Question number two. What name is given to a person who makes barrels? So they have a certain name, like a carpenter deals with wood. What does someone who makes barrels, what are they called? They've got a certain collective name. Question number three on general knowledge. In which decade did the Queen record the first televised Christmas message. So I'm not so much worried about the year. If you do get the year, that's fine. Give yourself a slap on the back. Uh, but I'm just looking for the decade in which she made her first televised Christmas broadcast, please. It was in black and white, so it was a bit of a while back. But which decade was it? Now, at Christmas, we do like to get the board games out. And if you've been with me before, you'll know I'm a lover of Monopoly. So this is a Monopoly question. What I'd like to know is the number of properties, please, on a Monopoly board. That's a standard, traditional London Monopoly board. I'd like to know the number of properties which have a coloured top. So don't count the stations. Don't count the utilities. Just the number of properties which have a coloured top. So you've got your old Kent Road, haven't you? That, that type of property, please. How many are there on a traditional Monopoly board? Question number five, we like our sweets at Christmas. So what I'd like to know is, and some of you will probably be as old as me, although not many probably, but many of you will be as old as me, and you will remember these. I'd like to know what Starburst sweets were called before they were called Starburst. So what were Starburst sweets called originally? They had a nice little jingle on the adverts that used to go with them. I'm sure that's popping into one or two memories across the UK this afternoon. But what were they called, those Starbursts, before they're called uh, what they are now, Starburst? So let's move on then. Question number six on general knowledge. I'd like to know what was signed, please, at Runnymede in 1215. That's the year, not the time. What was signed in Runnymede at 1215 by King John? So long, long time ago, the year 1215, King John say, signed something very, very famous. But what was it? So that was in England. And moving across the Atlantic to America for question number seven, what color is the Golden Gate Bridge? I should imagine it takes a fair bit of painting, but what color is the Golden Gate Bridge? Oh, 
I haven't been there myself. It's on my bucket list of things that I would like to do, uh, places I'd like to see, but I'd just like to know the colour of the Golden Gate Bridge. And let's move on to question number eight. This is a pop music question, this one. Time of year where we get lots of Christmas records released. But in 1978, who had a number one hit with Mary's Boy Child? It was the old Harry Belafonte hit, which had been discoed up to the disco boom of the 1970s. It got to number one in 1978. It was sung by Boney M, but what's it called? Question number nine. Now the boat race in London, sporty question this one, the boat race in London takes place on the River Thames every year and it always starts at Putney Bridge, but where does it end? So where does the boat race end every year? It starts at Putney Bridge, but in which town? Because it's not very far from Putney Bridge, to be fair, but in which town does it finish? It's quite quick if you walk it, but the river bends and meanders quite a bit. So it takes quite a while on the river. But where does it finish? Starts at Putney Bridge. And number 10, question number 10, what does a numismatist collect? A numismatist. What do they collect? I'll spell that for you in case I haven't pronounced it properly. N U M I S M A T I S T. What does a numismatist collect? Numismatist. So those were your general knowledge questions. I hope you're writing the answer, the questions down if you haven't got the answer to hand at the moment. Now, number one of round number two, and this round is all about somewhere in America. So it's a place somewhere in the United States. So question number one, what did the United States buy from the Russian empire for $7.2 million? in 1867 now they've still got it so it was quite a while ago now this is the round is somewhere in america so what did the americans buy from the russian empire for 7.2 million dollars in 1867 that must have been a heck of a lot of money in 1867 7.2 million dollars but what did they get for it got another pop music question for you for number two in somewhere in America. I'd like to know the name of the pop group, please, who had 1990s hit records with the following songs. Say What You Want, Black Eyed Boys, and In Our Lifetime. So there were a big, big group of the 1990s. These were three of the bigger hits that they had. Say What You Want, Black Eyed Boys, and In Our Lifetime. But what was the name of the group? Who were they? And let's move on. Number three. In the film, The Wizard of Oz, where was Dorothy trying to get home to? So the film, The Wizard of Oz, it's a great film. It's a timeless film. It's really, really popular even today, as you know. But where was Dorothy trying to get back to? Where was home for Dorothy? So the theme of the round, somewhere in America. So it's just a place. That's all I'm looking for in any of these answers. Let's move on to question number four, politics this time. In which state was Barack Obama born? So where does he hail from, Barack Obama? Which state? Probably one of the most charismatic presidents there's ever been, I would say, but where did he come from? Which American state was home? Number five somewhere in America, very popular for its universities is the United States. But which state is home to Harvard University? Which state is home to Harvard University? Whereabouts is it? Let's move on to question number six. Now, one of the big landmarks of America features 60 foot heads of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln. They're carved into a mountain 
in Dakota. But what is the name of the mountain that these heads are carved into? I should imagine it's quite a quite a sight to actually see them when you're not too far away. They look very impressive when you actually see them, you know, on the telly. But what is the name of the mountain that these heads of these famous presidents are carved into? So very famous presidents there. Now, some infamous people have been incarcerated in Alcatraz. But in which state would you find Alcatraz? This is question number seven. In which state would you find Alcatraz? <coughs> Excuse me. So in which American state would you find Alcatraz? So it's been the subject of many, many films over the years. Question number eight, which American state is known as the peach state? Very famous for its peaches, but which American state is known as the peach state? Number nine, on somewhere in America. Now, New York City consists of five boroughs. There's Manhattan, there's Brooklyn, there's the Bronx, there's Queens, but what's the other one? So New York City consists of five boroughs, Manhattan, Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens, and which other? So there's only five, and you've had four, I'd just like to know the other one, please. And question number 10 on somewhere in America, in which city was President Kennedy assassinated? So not the state, but the city. Which city was President Cass Cassidy? Let me try again. It's a combination of words here, but I'll get there. Bear with me. In which city was President Kennedy assassinated? There we are. I did get there in the end. So just to repeat myself, if there's anything you're not sure of, I hope you've written the questions down on a spare bit of paper so you can come back to it now we're moving on now to the mystery round if you've been with me before you'll know that a mystery round has nine questions and they all have a common theme and the answer to question 10 will be what links all these answers but we've got nine questions to get through i will need nine answers for them as we go through with the mystery round with the with the link if you don't know an answer but you get some answers further through the round, you may be able to work out what the missing answers are if you've got the link. You'll see what I mean as we work our way through. So question number one then on this mystery round, which cricket ground, which is owned by Marylebone Cricket Club, is known as the home of cricket? So which cricket ground owned by the Marylebone Cricket Club is known as the home of cricket? Question number two on this mystery round. Phil Collins, Keith Moon and John Bonham were all famous what? They're all famous for doing something. So Phil Collins, Keith Moon and John Bonham were all famous what? So two questions down in this mystery round. Let's move on to number three. Ida. Gadwall, common scotter, and barnacle are all types of which bird? So, Ida, Gadwall, common scotter, and barnacle, they're all types of which bird? How are you getting on with that link? Is anything starting to, to come to flicker through at the moment? I'm sure it will soon as we get through the round. Let's move on to number four. What is the nickname? of Swansea City Football Club. They're known as the somethings, but what is it? So the nickname of Swansea City Football Club, they're known as the, the what? So let's fall down on this mystery round. Let's move on to question number five. Now, Rowdy Roddy from the World Wrestling Experience, the WWE wrestlers, the World Wrestling Entertainment, I should say, and Billy from Doctor Who have the same surname. So that makes them both 
was. So Rowdy Roddy from the WWE and Billy from Doctor Who have the same surname. So that makes them both Watts. According to their surname, they're both Watts. Let's move on. Question number six. Nice classic bit of telly. Downton Abbey. Do you like your Downton Abbey? How can you not like it? Uh, which types of servants are Edna Braithwaite, Anna Bates and Daisy Mason? So what types of servants are they? They're all the same type. So you've got Edna Braithwaite, Anna Bates and Daisy Mason. They're all the same type of servants. But what type of servants are they? They had quite a few, didn't they, in uh, Downton? Moving on, question number seven on this mystery round. Which fictitious, inept broadcaster was played by Steve Coogan on the telly? He's been on the telly quite a few times this year, but which fictitious, inept broadcaster was played by Steve Coogan? I'm sure we've all seen him at uh, one time or another. Let's move on. Number eight. According to the title of their first hit record, what type of night were Cool and the gang singing about? Do a bit of disco, this one. According to the title of their first hit record, what type of night were Cool and the gang singing about? And number nine. Now, you're going to have to excuse my pronunciation. My uh, foreign speaking is not as good as it should be. So what are Le Poule? Now, I'm going to spell that because it could be Le Poule or it could be Le Poule. So I'm going to spell it for you. L-E-S for Le and P-O-U-L-E-S for Poule or Poule. I used to be able to speak this language when I was much younger, but I did leave school a fair while ago. And my pronunciation probably isn't as good as it could be. So apologies for students of language everywhere. But what are Le Poule? P-O-U-L-E-S. And question number 10, what is it that links all these answers together? So we'll just take a couple of moments just for you to finalise any questions or any answers that you haven't got yet, because I'm just about to go through the answers for the first three rounds. Then we'll move on. And we'll have a look at the last three rounds as well. So I hope you're ready. Let's move on. Let's move back, I should say. We're starting off as we did with general knowledge on round number one. Question number one, um, the name of the storm that battered Britain on the last weekend of November. Well, that was Storm Arwen. The name that's given to someone who makes barrels is a Cooper. Cooper? And the decade in which the Queen first made her first televised Christmas message, that was in the 1950s, 1957 to be precise. If you got that, well done. But 1950s is what I was looking for. I then asked you on question number four, how many properties there are on a monopoly board which have a coloured top? So I didn't want you to count the names of the stations or the, uh, the utilities. So there are, let's have a look, there's two brown ones, three light blue, three purple, three orange, three red, three yellow, three green, and two dark blue. So that is 22 of them all together. Number five, I asked you what Starbucks sweets were previously known as. Well, they were opal fruits and the advert went something along the lines of opal fruits made to make your mouth water. I know lots of us will remember that uh, little commercial. Number six, I asked you what was signed in 1215 at Runnymede by King John. Well, that was the Magna Carta. Number seven, the colour of the Golden Gate Bridge. Well, it's orange or dark red. You can have either orange or uh, burnt red. And that's because it gets foggy over there quite a lot and it just makes it stand out in the fog. So orange or dark red. <clears throat> the group that had that 1978 Christmas number one with Mary's boy child. I know I did say it was Boney M in the question, <laughs> but uh, moving on, it was Boney M. So well done if you got that. Let's move on to number nine. The boat race starts at Putney Bridge and finishes at Mortlake. And the numismatist collects coins. So that was your general knowledge. You can give yourself one mark for each answer, by the way. Somewhere in America was round number two. What did the United States buy from the Russian Empire for those $7.2 million all those years ago in 1867? Well, it was Alaska. 
That's what they bought. They've still got it, as you know, Alaska. The pop group that had those 1990s hits, Say What You Want, Black Eyed Boys, and In Our Lifetime. Well, that's Texas. Dorothy was trying to get back to Kansas on question number three. And Barack Obama was born in Hawaii for question number four. Number five, Harvard University was in Massachusetts. And those 60 foot heads of those presidents, they are found on Mount Rushmore. Alcatraz, question number seven. Well, that's in the state of California. The American state known as the Peach State is Georgia. The New York City five boroughs, I gave you four, Manhattan, Brooklyn's, the Bronx and Queens. And the other one I was looking for was Staten Island. And President Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas. We then moved on to the mystery round. So question number one, the cricket ground owned by the Marylebone Cricket Club, home of cricket is Lords. Phil Collins, Keith Moon and John Bonham were all famous drummers. Ida, Gadwell, Common Scotter and Barnacle, they're all types of geese. The nickname of Swansea City Football Club, they are the Swans. Rowdy Roddy from the WWE and Billy P Billy from Doctor Who, they are both Pipers. Their surnames are Piper, so that makes them Pipers. Downton Abbey, those maids was the answer there. Um, Anna Bates, Edna Braithwaite and Daisy Mason, they were all maids. The fictitious inept broadcaster played by Steve Coogan. Well, that was Alan Partridge. We know where we're going now. And according to the title of the first hit record, what type of night were cool and the gang singing about? Well, that was a ladies night. And Le Poulet, you probably didn't recognize it from my pronunciation, or Le Poulet, whatever it is, they are French hens. So the link was lords, drummers, geese, swans, pipers, maids, partridge, ladies, and French hens, the 12 days of Christmas song. So those were the first three rounds. Give yourself a point for each answer. And while you're doing that, we can move on to round number four. So three rounds to go. This is about games and quiz shows. And I'd like to know which current TV programme is hosted by Victoria Corin Mitchell. It's had many, many series on the telly so far. Very popular. It's on BBC Two. Uh, which current television show is hosted by Victoria Corin Mitchell? Number two on uh, games and quiz shows. How many questions does a contestant have to answer correctly to win a million pounds on who wants to be a millionaire? Sounds easy, but as you know, it isn't. How many questions does a contestant have to answer correctly to win those one million pounds? Now, this next one's going back quite a way, actually. Uh, number three, on which game show would you have found Bernie the Bolt? Now, those of you who are old as I am will remember Bernie the Bolt. Great programme, but do you remember it? Which game show would you have found him on, Bernie the Bolt? Number four, which game show from the 1980s and 90s shares its name with Bill Sykes's dog, in Oliver Twist. So which game show from the 1980s and 90s shares its name with Bill Sykes's dog in the Oliver Twist story? So question number five on game and quiz shows. By what name is Jenny Ryan better known? Jenny Ryan, what's she better known as? And question number six, which game show has been hosted by Richard O'Brien, Ed Tudor-Pole and Richard Aode? I hope I pronounced his name correctly. A-Y-O-A-D-E. Richard Aode. I hope I have pronounced that correctly. So I'd like to know the, game of the, the name of the game show, which has been presented by him, Ed Tudor-Pole and Richard O'Brien. Really great concept for a game show, this one. And question number seven, which game show shares its name with something my true love gave to me on one of the 12 days of Christmas? So which game show shares its name with something my true love gave to me on one of the 12 days of Christmas?
Moving on. Question number eight. How many players are there on each team in Family Fortunes? Still very popular. It's been going many, many years, hasn't it? Uh, Gino De Campio, he's doing it now, as you know. But how many players are on each team in Family Fortunes? Question number nine. Now, it only ran for one year, and that was in 2011 to 2012. The game show Red or Black. Do you remember that one? Red or Black only ran for a year, but I'd like to know who was hosting it. So only running for a year from 2011 to 2012, the game show Red or Black was hosted by who? And the last question on games and quiz shows, on which game show would you find Trojan, Tempest, Rhino and Lightning? And this one's going back a bit. On which game show would you find Trojan, Tempest, Rhino and Lightning? Very, very popular game show. Pops up a lot on some of the older channels. But I think they all do, don't they? So those were your 10 questions on games and quiz shows. Round number five, Christmas shopping and shops. So Christmas shopping and shops. Now, these are either shops or things you might buy at Christmas time. So question number one, which chain store was created by Robert Block and David Quayle in Southampton in 1969 and now has branches in nearly every town in the UK. So the chain store created by Robert Block and David Quayle in Southampton in 1969 is known as what? what's the name of the store? It's got branches in virtually every town in the UK. Very popular shop. Now, talking of popular shops and to do popular adverts, whose Christmas advert from 2016 features two foxes, one badger and a boxer dog jumping up and down on a trampoline? So whose Christmas advert from 2016 features two foxes, one badger and a boxer dog jumping up and down on a trampoline? Really great advert. I hope these are bringing back some great memories for you. Number three on your Christmas shops and shopping. Twilight Sparkle, Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy are characters from which toy range? So Twilight Sparkle, Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy are characters in which toy range? Let's move on. A traditional toy, this one. Which brick was invented? by Gottfried Kirk Christensen in 1958. Still very popular today, but the brick invented by Gottfried Kirk Christensen in 1958, still popular today. What's it called? What type of brick is it? I think we've all played with one of these at some point or another. Now we've had a couple of references already to the 12 days of Christmas, uh, but let's have another one. According to the song, what did my true love send me on the eighth day of Christmas? So according to that song, what did my true love send me on the eighth day of Christmas? And this will be the last time that we visit that particular song. At least I think it will be. According to that song then, what did my true love send me on the eighth day of Christmas? That was question number five. Now, question number six. Now, I had one of these when I was about eight or nine years old. Dad bought it for me. <clears throat> it's still very popular today, but it first came to prominence in the late 1960s. And I'd like to know the name of this toy. Now, it was invented by Dennis Fisher, and it was a, an invention where you had a cog. So it was a round wheel with cogs on it, and you put a pen in a hole on the cogs, and you moved it along a, another bar which had cogged teeth on it and you could make intricate patterns as the cog moved along. There were lots and lots of different cogs. They were all different sizes. So you can make small patterns or big patterns. And you did it by putting a pen into a hole and moving the cog along. But what was the name of this toy? It was the toy of the year in 1967. It was a runner up just a few years ago for toy of the year. So still purchased today, still very popular. What's it called?
And question number seven, in which decade did the Barbie doll first appear? So in which decade did the Barbie doll first appear? Again, I'm not looking for the precise year, although if you know it, fair play. You give yourself, well, you can't give yourself an extra mark, but you can give yourself an extra mince pie. So in which decade did the Barbie doll first appear? Number eight, whose Christmas advert usually features Kevin the Carrot? Lots of people trying to buy them a year or two back. If I remember, it was on the news where people were getting very cross because other people were buying too many of them. But whose Christmas advert usually features Kevin the Carrot? Question number nine. Now, we all like to buy toys at Christmas. But what I'd like to know is, what is the name of the world famous toy store which can be found in Regent Street in central London, which has seven floors full of toys? So the toy store found in central London in Regent Street. What's it called? It's world famous. It's got branches, well, several smaller branches, several smaller outlets, but the main store is in Regent Street in London, and it has seven floors. And last question then on the Christmas shopping. So a British white, a Norfolk black, a Harvey spotted and a bourbon red are all types of what? So a British white, a Norfolk black, a Harvey spotted and a bourbon red are all types of what? Something that we normally buy at Christmas time. So British white, Norfolk black, Harvey spotted and a bourbon red. What are they? They're all different types of something. So that was your 10th question on Christmas shopping. And Christmas films is the last round this afternoon. Where's the time going? I don't know, but let's move on. Question number one in the film. Miracle on 34th Street, what is the name of the department store that hires Chris Kringle? So in a Miracle on 34th Street, what is the name of the store that hires Chris Kringle? That's a great film, isn't it? It's a great film. Question number two, what is the name of the character? And now I know this isn't specifically a Christmas film, but it's set at Christmas. What is the name of the character played by Bruce Willis in Die Hard? What is the name of the character played by Bruce Willis in Die Hard? Let's move on to number three. Now, this is a lovely film. I never tire of watching this. I'm not really into rom-coms, but who plays the prime minister in Love, actually? There's so many good performances in that film, so many good stories, so little subplots which are running through. But who plays the prime minister in Love, actually? So moving on, it's a time for movies, isn't it? Let's stick with those Christmas films. In which film does Bing Crosby sing White Christmas? So in which film does Bing Crosby sing White Christmas? So it is around all on Christmas films. Let's have another one. Question number five. Which book written by Raymond Briggs was made into an animated movie in 1982? So which book written by Raymond Briggs was made into an animated movie in 1982? It's on nearly every year and quite rightly so. It's a great film. Question number six. Will Ferrell goes looking for his father in which 2003 movie? So Will Ferrell, he's on the lookout for his dad in which 2003 movie? Voted one of the most popular Christmas films ever. Number seven, which 2004 movie features the voice of Tom Hanks as the narrator and also the train conductor? I haven't seen this film yet, but which 2004 movie features the voice of Tom Hanks as the narrator and also the train conductor?
Christmas movies. Number eight. Which 1990 movie does the character Kevin McAllister confront two burglars? And it's on every year. I don't think there's very many people who haven't seen this all the way through. There might be one or two, uh, but very, very popular. It's uh, originally made in 1990, 31 years ago. How is that possible? Uh, in which 1990 movie does the character Kevin McAllister confront two burglars? Question number nine, absolutely classic Christmas movie. Who is the former business partner of Ebenezer Scrooge, whose ghost pays him a visit? So who is the name, or rather, what is the name of the former business partner of Ebenezer Scrooge, whose ghost pays him a visit? Because he gets visited by the three ghosts, Christmas, past, present and future. But he also gets visited by the ghost of his former partner. But who was his famous, or sorry, his former partner. Getting excited there. It's nearly Christmas. And number 10, it's the last question of the quiz today. How is this possible? But James Stewart plays George Bailey, who receives a visit from his guardian angel, Clarence Oddbody, on Christmas Eve, in which 1946 movie? So James Stewart plays George Bailey, in which 1946 movie and he receives a visit from his guardian angel Clarence Oddbody. So those are your questions for today. Let's go through the answers on this the second session then. We're going back to round number four on those games and quiz shows. Which current TV show is hosted by Victoria Cora and Mitchell? Well that's only Connect. I was quite pleased one week I got three right. That's not bad in half an hour. How many, or at least I don't think it is, I hope it isn't. Uh, number two, how many questions does a contestant have to answer correctly to win one million pounds and who wants to be a millionaire? Well, that's 15, that's all. Sounds simple, isn't it? But as we know, it isn't. Number three, on which game show would you find Bernie the Bolt? Well, that was on the Golden Shot. Do you remember the Golden Shot where he was blindfolded and had to fire at a target by being given directions by a viewer on the phone? No, it's way before your time, I know, but it used to be a good programme. Number four, the game show from the 80s and 90s that shares its name uh, with the dog who belongs to Bill Sykes in Oliver Twist. Well, that's Bullseye. Bullseye. Let's see what you would have won. That's what Jim Bowen used to say, wasn't it? It was very cruel when people didn't win, but he told them what they could have had if they'd have played better. Lovely. Great telly. Number five, um, Jenny Ryan is better known as the Vixen on The Chase. Number six, the game show, which has been hosted by Richard O'Brien, Ed Tudor Pole, and Richard Adiodi. That is the Crystal Maze. Excellent concept for a programme. Still very popular today. And the game show that shares its name was something my true love gave to me on one of the 12 days of Christmas. Well, that's one of Philip Schofield's outings on the telly. That is Five Gold Rings. That's, again, that's really good. I like playing along that with the app. Hope you do as well. Number eight, how many players are there in each team? in family fortunes well there are five and that red or black game show only ran for a year way back in 2011 2012 who hosted it well it was ant and deck and number 10 you would find tempest rhino and lightning and trojan you would find them in gladiators do you remember gladiators fabulous program from the 1990s we move then to christmas shopping and the, I asked you which chain store was created by Robert Block and David Quayle way back in 1969. Well, you've got B for Block, Q for Quayle, so that's B and Q. The Christmas advert of 2016, which features those foxes, the badger and the boxer dog, all jumping up and down, having a great time on the trampoline. Well, that's the John Lewis advert. Twilight Sparkle, Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy, they are all in characters in My Little Pony. Number four, the brick that was created by Gottfried Kirk Christensen all those years ago. Well, that's a Lego brick. And in the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, my true love gave me on the eighth day of Christmas, eight maids a milking. And number six, which best selling toy of the 1960s involved putting the pen in the cog that went along another cog and made those intricate patterns? Well, that's a spirograph. Spirograph. Great fun. And the decade that the Barbie doll first appeared, well, that was in the 1950s. And if you got 1959, 
well done to you, but you still only get a point. Number eight, the Christmas advert um, that usually features Kevin the carrot. Well, that's Aldi or Aldi, however you pronounce it. The world famous toy store uh, on seven floors in Regent Street. Well, that's Hamless. And that British white, the Norfolk black, the Harvey spotted and the bourbon red. Well, they're all breeds of turkey. They're all types of turkeys. We then moved on to the last round, which is Christmas films. And question number one, in that miracle on 34th Street, the name of the store which employs Chris Kringle is Macy's. The name of the character played by Bruce Willis in Die Hard, well, that's John McClane. The Prime Minister in Love Actually was played by Hugh Grant. For me, that's one of his best performances, excellent film. But let's, I've digressed, let's move on. The film that Bing Crosby sings White Christmas in, well, that is in Holiday Inn. The book written by Raymond Briggs, which was turned into an animated film in 1982. Well, that's The Snowman. Will Ferrell goes looking for his father in Elf. The 2004 movie, which features the voice of Tom Hanks as the narrator and the train conductor. Well, that's The Polar Express. The 1990 movie with Kevin McAllister confronting those two burglars. Well, that's Home Alone. And the former business partner of Ebenezer Scrooge, whose ghost pays him a visit. Well, that is Jacob Marley. That was his former business partner. And James Stewart plays George Bailey. He gets a visit from his guardian angel, Clarence Oddbody, on Christmas Eve in the 1946 movie. That is, It's a Wonderful Life. I really hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you very much for your company today. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Come back, let's do it all again very, very soon. But from me, Merry Christmas and all the best for next year. Enjoy.